Good evening Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again back for your third and final video blog of the night for Wednesday, December 24th, 2014 around 8, 19 p.m. in Bellwicker, Massachusetts. Uh, it's a wet night. The rain is coming down, coming down a little bit heavy now. It highs are bumping up. It's going to be well over 50 tonight and tomorrow morning when the rain ends on Christmas Day it could reach 60. Amazing. This is spring type weather like Easter type weather and I just hope we don't have a major blizzard on Easter which in 2015 will be April 12th so hopefully no blizzard on on Easter and some news to report the 24 hours of continuous airing of the Christmas story starting right now on TBS and TNT and also it's a wonderful life's on NBC no Celtics or Bruins games tonight they have off Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and that's about it on the news my third and final video blog subject tonight is about my personality profile tonight's personality profile is about the late great professional wrestler Dino Bravo. Dino Bravo was one of the most famous French Canadian wrestlers of all time. He's known for having the Canadian strongest man gimmick in the WWE in 1988 through 1991 and he's known for the, the, the record for best pressing 712 pounds. Dino Bravo was born in Italy and he was born under the name Aldolfo Brescanico. His family immigrated to Quebec, Canada when he was a youngster and Aldolfo trained to become a professional wrestler by Gino Brito aka Louis Creedon who used to be a former WWF tag team champion back in 1975 and 1976 with Tony Parise. They had a long reign with the WWF tag team titles during that time period. And he and Aldolfo made his de pro wrestling debut in 1970 in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and he used the name Dino Bravo. Dino Bravo was actually a wrestler's name back in the 50s. And and Dino Bravo teamed with Britton in in like a couple of like tag teams and they were billed as cousins. And Dino Bravo wrestled for many years in the Montreal territory, which was called International Wrestling. He was one of the biggest baby faces in that territory. He won the Canadian Heavyweight Championship six times. He also wrestled in, in other regional territories in North America, including the AWA. He had some classic matches with Nick Barkwinkle over the AWA World Tour. World title. He wrestled in Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. He teamed with Tim Woods, the original Mr. Res Mr. Wrestling, and they won several Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Championships. Also, Dino Bravo had some feuds over the U.S. title with Blackjack Mulligan, the Mid-Atlantic World Champ um, title with Ken Patera, and he got some title shots with the NWA World Champion at the time, Harley Race. But Bravo didn't win the NWA World title. Also, B Dino Bravo had a run in the WWF in 1978. He and Dominic Danucci were WWF Tag Team Champions. They beat Professor Tanaka and Mr. Fuji in March of 1978. And they held the title for three months until, until June of 1978 when they lost to the Yukon Lumberjacks. Dino Bravo continued to wrestle in international wrestling in the 80s a lot and he was probably one of the most popular baby faces there in 1985 when the international wrestling territory was going downhill it was folding Dino signed with the WWE and he was built as a Canadian champion and he teamed with Keen ha King Tonga who later became Haku and Ming but they did not get a big push they were stuck like beating preliminary wrestlers on television only. And a strange thing happened in in February of 1986. Dino Bravo 
was going to wrestle Hulk Hogan for the WWE title at Montreal Forum in Montreal, Canada. This was being promoted in Canada and f in Montreal area that Dino Bravo was going to face Hulk Hogan at the Montreal Forum for the WWE title over Canadian, French Canadian television. But when when Dino Bravo got to the arena in February 1986 in Montreal, he was supposed to wrestle Hulk Hogan. He got a different opponent, and Hogan got a different opponent too. And the reason why that happened, the WWE officials, the suits, the agents, producers feared that Hulk Hogan would get a heel reception in um, in like Montreal because Dino Bravo was probably one of the top baby faces in Montreal, so you can't have Hogan being booed at that time. It was not going to happen. So Dino Bravo was pissed. He left the WWE for a while, and he wrestled in Canada again. He comes back to the WWE in November of 1986, and he was in a six-man tag with the Rujo Bloods, the Fabius Rujo brothers, Jacques and Raymond, and they faced off against the Dream Team, Brutus the Barber, Pete, Beefcake and Greg the Hammer Valentine and their manager losses Johnny V and Dino Bravo turns on the Rougeau brothers, turns heel and joins Johnny V and the new Dream Team eh, and the Dream Team and Dino Bravo like like is like a heel, he's managed by Johnny V for a while, but in like WrestleMania three, Dino Bravo dyes his hair blonde and he interferes in the match between the Rouge Brothers and the Dream Team. Greg the Hammer, Valentine, and Bruce Beefcake. They throw Bruce Beefcake out of the Dream Team. And then Johnny V manages the new Dream Team of Greg the Hammer, Valentine, and Dino Bravo. And it's this, the new Dream Team of Bravo and Valentine suck big time. They had no chemistry together backstage. Bravo and Valentine didn't get along. They had no push. There was a rumor. That, that the new Dream Team was asked to kidnap Matilda, the British Bulldog's mascot and dog, but both Valentine and Bravo refused to do that. Um, Valentine briefly quit the WWE, and Bravo was given a new gimmick. He was given a new gimmick and also a, and a new manager, Frenchie Martin, who was a jobber on WWE TV, and, but he was like a Rep, a decent mid card wrestler in the international wrestling in Montreal, and the gimmick they Dino Bravo was given was a the Canadian the strongest Canadian man gimmick, and to get this gimmick over, he bench pressed at the first Royal Rumble five six seven hundred pounds, and then when he went for the world record <coughs> seven hundred and twelve pounds. He needed help from Jesse the Body Ventura to get it up, and he breaks the record. But I don't know if this is an official record or not. The weights were gimmicked, I think. And this got Dino Bravo over as a mid-card hero. Dino Bravo feuded with Ken Patella. See, he was the strongest man in the world. Ken Patella was all washed up by then. Dino Bravo e easily got this feud. And he also last feuded with Don Rock Morocco and a couple of others during the summer of 1988. And Frenchy Martin held up the sign, USA is not okay. USA is not okay. What does f f um, can Canadians have? Why, why did they have to do this for? Because Canadians has never had a trouble with USA. It was just a wrestling gimmick, but that was an idea for Dino Bravo to feud with the guy who loved America the most in the WWE at the, that time. Oh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Dino Bravo and Hacksaw Jim Duggan have a mid-card feud in house shows, and they on opposing teams at Survivor Series 1989. 88, and then this feud builds over to the 1989 Royal Rumble when Hacks are Jim Duggan's teams with the Hart Foundation to face off against um, Dino Bravo and the fabulous Rougeau brothers, Shark and Raymond, who who have now an all American gimmick, and and some and it, that was a good match. Eventually, Frenchy Martin was phased out as Dino Bravo's manager. Then Jim, Dino Bravo gets managed by the mouth of shelf Jimmy Hart. And then Dino Bravo 
had a few with the ultimate Oreo over the Intercontinental Championship in the fall and went to 1989 into 1990. Then, you know, Bravo on an episode of Superstars of Wrestling brings somebody out of the crowd to do push-ups on him and was back. It was Big John, but Big John was the earthquake. And, the, you know, Bravo did push-ups with the earthquake easily on his back. But when, they, when Big John tried to do it with the Ultimate Warrior, he attacks the Ultimate Warrior. Then Dino Bravo and Earthquake kind of form an alliance, and it was a great alliance. It, it, it was probably the best one with, and of his WWE run. Dino Bravo and the Earthquake were together a lot. They teamed together. They interfered in their matches if they wrestled big time in Pullman or not. And it was a pretty good year and a half run. Eventually, Dino Bravo was kind of being phased out of WWE television by March of 1991. He wrestled the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich. At WrestleMania 7, Kerry Von Erich beat Dino Bravo, and Dino Bravo was off of WWE television completely. He was written out of story, and I had no mention of that. Dino Bravo comes back on gone in the WWE on Canadian television and French Canadian to- television back with his, like, brown hair, wrestling was in Canada and gets cheered as a face, no mention of Jimmy Hart or Earthquake and stuff. And he wrestles house shows in Montreal, facing off against the Mountie and the Barbarian and the Warlord. He makes, was set to retire in 1992 to train wrestlers in his native Canada, Quebec, Canada. And it's one of his last matches was his team with Kuna Mustafa, who was also known as the, <coughs> the Iron Sheik. He's off against the Legion of Doom in a European tour in 1992, and he has like one more match on that same European tour against Brit the Hit Nine Hot over the IC Championship than Dino with Bravo with titles. But there was a big dark secret on Dino Bravo when he got out of the wrestling business. He was part of the Montreal underground world, part of the mafia, and during the early 1990s, a lot of people in Canada were smuggling in cigarettes and, and from, the, from the United States because they had high taxes on cigarettes in, Can, in, in Quebec, Canada around this time, and they had like undercover people who were smuggling in them and they could sell them cheap and Dino Bravo was the ringleader, supposedly the ringleader about all of this, and he's got arrested a couple of times. He was supposed to have a retirement match for him at the Montreal Forum in December 1992 in front of WWE, but the WWE canceled it and stuff like that. But Dino Bravo was becoming infamous with being like a ringleader with the mafia and stuff like that. And in March of 1993, at his home in Laval, Quebec, Canada, Dino Bravo was watching a hockey game one night, and then there was a couple of people came into his into his house, and they shot him close to twenty five times, killing him at the only at the age of 44, <coughs> 44 years old. Very sad. This this was a, a very tragic incident. Very sad. Why would it like a professional wrestler go into to to be the underground world of the mafia for? I don't know, maybe he had a lot of demons and stuff, Dino Bravo. This got like infamous coverage on French newspapers in Quebec, Montreal. It was a front page headline in one of the French language newspapers the next day. And the WWE never acknowledged the passing of Dino Bravo on television. That was pretty sad. One of the most saddest stories for a professional wrestler ever. Him getting shot, shot and killed. <coughs> Sorry about that. I thought like Dino Bravo's WWE run with the, the Canadian Strongman gimmick was probably a decent gimmick. It was a mid card heel at best, and you know, he, he Dino Bravo had a few managers, but I thought if he had like a mid card heel gimmick, he could have gotten over on his own and stuff like that. And I don't think I don't think he'll ever go into WWE Hall of Fame, but you never know. And stuff like that. And that's about it on Dino Bravo. 
I hope you enjoy you these video blogs, Facebook friends, and YouTube followers. I'm getting good good feedback on these. They love people are loving these. They're continuing to grow. More people are sharing some of my videos. And I'm getting more and more followers on YouTube, which is good. Tomorrow, three more video blogs. One's going to be about the top 10 greatest professional wrestling interview segments of all time. Second of all, second will be some more 2015 predictions in the world of business. Third and final video blog of the night will be about the person I fall file, Nolan Lyon. And <coughs> sorry, I'm, I have a little bit of a cough, so bear with me. And next week, the person I profiles all Next week will be about four of the best French Canadian professional wrestlers of all time. Pat Patterson, Marta Rick Martel, Rugged Ronnie Garvin, and do 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 I'm the Mountie. I'm handsome. I'm brave. I'm strong. I'm the Mountie. Cause I enforce the law. You could try to one, but you could never hide. Cause I'm the Mountie. I always get my man, the Mountie Jack Rougeau, and I'm definitely sooner than later. Julie Bratton and Heidi Pratt will definitely get a video blog. See you later, Facebook friends and YouTube. I'll see you tomorrow.